Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Sam from Historic Travels and welcome to another video. And as always, before we get started, I'd just like to take a quick moment to welcome all my new subscribers and to thank everybody who's been leaving me comments and messages down below. Thank you guys so much, I really appreciate it. And if you would like to take a couple of extra steps to help support the channel a little bit more, there's a merch store and a Patreon for this channel in the links below. Thank you guys so much for all your support. Okay, so for all of you who missed it, a few days ago, I put up a series of topics on my YouTube community page and I asked all of you to vote on those topics and select what you guys would like for the topic of today's video. And the winner of that voting was the topic, was the Titanic disaster foretold or predicted? Meaning, did somebody predict the sinking of the Titanic before the disaster actually occurred? Now, if you look at the modern day conspiracies about the Titanic disaster, you'll find all kinds of claims of so-called predictions or foretellings of the Titanic disaster. But for today's video, I want to talk about two predictions in particular. The first prediction I want to talk about is the story of a fictional book that was written a while before the Titanic disaster occurs that seems to predict the disaster of the Titanic exactly. And the second prediction I want to talk about is the supposed prediction of one of the Titanic's passengers who thought that something bad was going to happen to the ship before the ship even left Southampton. So that's what we're going to be covering in today's video, and without any further ado, let's get into it. The fictional book that supposedly tells the story or predicts the story of the Titanic is called The Wreck of the Titan, written by a man named Morgan Robertson in the year of 1898, some 14 years before the sinking of the Titanic would occur. Now, even though this book is a work of fiction, many people have pointed out that the story in this book is eerily similar to the story of the Titanic. So, are these claims true, and do they have any basis in fact? Well, I looked into it. Now, me personally, I've never been the type of person to really believe anyone when they tell me that they can predict the future or see the future or know the outcome of something before that event actually takes place. I've always operated under the belief that the future isn't written and it's up to each and every single one of us to make the future that we want. It's up to each of us to plot our own course, so to speak, and yes, pun intended. But I will admit, once I looked into the story of the Wreck of the Titan, there are a lot of very eerie similarities between what happened in this book and with what happened to the Titanic. So what are the similarities between the ship in the book and in the real life Titanic? Well, for starters, it's the vessel's name in the book. Believe it or not, the name of the ship in the book is called the Titan. Now, the fact that both vessels have similar names, I'll admit, is pretty bizarre and creepy. But when I was researching the other similarities between these two ships, what I discovered was many of these similarities can be rationally explained. You see, Morgan Robertson was really into ocean liners at the time, and that's one big reason why he wrote this book. So many of these similarities between the Titanic and the Titan could be rationally explained because the guy who wrote this book was intimately familiar with ocean liners and he knew how these ships worked. So what I'm going to do now, I made a list of all the similarities between the two ships and I'm gonna read you this list of similarities and then I'm going to explain to you if I believe that this is a eerie prediction of the future or if this similarity is something that can be rationally explained because the guy who wrote the book was really into ocean liners, like what the Titanic would eventually be. The first similarity is both ships were British owned steel ships. Okay, so upon first glance, this does seem like an eerie prediction of the future. However, what you have to understand is there were only so many countries at the time doing the transatlantic voyage from Europe to America. So anybody who was familiar with ocean liners would just pick one of these countries and go with it. So it doesn't really surprise me that both of these ships would be British owned steel ships. The length of the Titan was around 800 feet long, and the Titanic was 882 feet. While upon first glance this does seem like an eerie similarity between the two ships, there is a pretty big size difference between both vessels, so I wouldn't count this as a similarity at all. Both ships didn't have enough lifeboats. Okay, so this was a pretty common thing at the time. Many ships didn't have enough lifeboats for everybody on board because, ship, or because lifeboats weren't seen as a means to completely evacuate a vessel. So anybody who was intimately familiar with ocean liners would put this in their book. So again, I don't really count this as an eerie prediction of the future. Both ships sunk in April. Okay, that is a pretty eerie prediction of the future, if, I, if, if you want to ask my opinion. I have no explanation as to why he would choose April as his month to have the ship in the book sink, so eh. 
Both ships hit an iceberg on the starboard side around midnight. Again, I have no explanation for that one. That is an eerie similarity to the story of the Titanic. The Titan held 2,500 passengers. The Titanic had 2,200 on board its maiden voyage. Okay, so this could be taken two ways. It could be seen as a similarity between the two ships, which it quite possibly could be a eerie coincidence between the two ships. But the other thing you have to remember is that the Titanic had a maximum carrying capacity for 3,000 people. It just happened to have 2,200 on board for its maiden voyage. So honestly, you could, I could see this going both ways. It could be an eerie similarity to the Titanic, or it could just be somebody who was intimately familiar with ocean liners just wrote this in their book for the heck of it. Both ships sunk 400 miles south of Newfoundland. I have no explanation for that one. That is pretty eerie. The only way that this would make sense to me is if, is if Morgan Robertson was familiar with the Labrador Current, bringing icebergs down to that general area. If he knew this, then it does make sense that he would pick the general area he did for the book. But still, having it exactly 400 miles south of Newfoundland, which is about where the Titanic was, that is a pretty eerie similarity, if you ask me. But probably the biggest similarity that people always like to point to when they compare the Titanic with the Titan is that both vessels were claimed to be unsinkable. So while it is true that in the wreck of the Titan, the Titan was claimed to be unsinkable, it's a little bit more complicated with the Titanic. You see, the fact of the matter is, the Titanic was never claimed to be unsinkable. As far as I know, the only claims of the White Star Line that in any shape or form could resemble them saying the Titanic was unsinkable is that members of their company said that the Titanic was as unsinkable as we know how to make a ship. But they never claimed the Titanic was unsinkable. To them and to the general public, Everybody just thought the Titanic was a safe ship. Nobody had this religious faith in the vessel. So I really wouldn't count that as a similarity between the Titanic and the Titan. So in conclusion, what do I think? Is the Wreck of the Titan book a book that foretold the disaster of the Titanic? Well, in my opinion, not really. While there can be no mistaking the similarities between the Titanic and the Titan, most of the similarities between the two ships can be rationally explained because the guy who wrote the Titan book was intimately familiar with ocean liners. And then, as for the similarities between the Titanic and the Titan that can't be explained, I tend to think of these as mere coincidences, because there weren't enough of these similarities for me to actually say that this book foretold the story of the Titanic disaster. Now, if you ask me, the only story of predicting the Titanic disaster that seems to have some basis of truth to it can only be found in the story of Eva Hart and her family. You see, for those of you who don't know, Eva Hart was seven years old when she boarded the Titanic with her mother and father. But originally, Eva Hart and her family were not due to sail on the Titanic at all. They were originally booked on another ship. But then their trip on that ship got canceled, so they were transferred over to the Titanic. And then upon learning this, Eva's mother freaked out. She said, no, we cannot sail on this ship. Something dreadful will happen if we sail on this ship. But Eva's father, trying to be the voice of reason, said, no, you're imagining things. Everything will be fine. Let's sail on the Titanic. So Eva's mother eventually agreed to sail on the Titanic, but with one condition. She said, I will only sail on that ship if I sleep during the daytime and sit up at night because I know something's going to happen. And this is what she did. So throughout the entire voyage, Eva's mother sat up at night while the Titanic was sailing along and then she slept during the daytime. And she was wide awake as ever on the night of April the 14th, 1912, when she said she felt a bump and it was like a train pulling into a station or a jerk. That's how she described it. And she immediately knew that this was this horrible something that she was so terrified of. So she woke up her husband, told him to go up on deck and find out what was going on. And that's what he did. And then he came back down to the cabin and told both of them to get dressed and we need to get up on deck as soon as possible. So if you ask me, that truly is the only story of somebody actually predicting the sinking of the Titanic. And I have no rational way of explaining that. 
Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting. And if you like this video, please be sure to leave it a like. If you're new here, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you, guys. It really helps out a lot. All right, everybody. Well, hey, you all stay safe out there, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good night, everybody. Special thanks to Patreon Captain Level supporter Callum Whaley. Thank you so much for all the support, man.